So let's start uh, our last of the discussion uh, uh, by Paula, uh, com comparing degree days and argument with the analysis. That's also the work with APN. That's why we have a problem. Let's start. Good morning, everyone. Um, hope that everyone's morning and the lunch is coming soon. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, one okay. okay. So um, I want to say first that this is a, a initial stage of my research. So um, all your comments and suggestions and questions, corrections, etc. are going to be very welcome. I'm going to continue talking about even uh, me and John and the same supervisor, um, but uh, the talk is going to be in a different spirit than the previous. Um, okay. So even has been analyzed as a scale and focus sensitive particle, but there has been a lot of debate about the scale that even operates on, and some people claim that this is unlikely good, uh, informativeness, unexpectedness, noteworthiness, etc. Uh, but today in my talk, I'm going to compare two recent approaches to the analysis of even, which is the degree-based approach by Greenberg and the, the argumentative approach by Melo um, so first, I'm going to introduce both the columns separately, and second, I'm going to compare them in order to eventually argue in favor of the argumentative approach for the reasons that I'm going to explain later. Okay, some background on even. Um, so in one, you can see the classical scale of the supposition of even, which says that for a set C of contextually relevant focus alternatives, which differ from P, only by the proper element that uh, being replaced by an element of the same semantic type. Even CP presupposes that the adjacent P is stronger than all these different alternatives, Q and C. Um, you can notice that in this definition, the stronger than relation here is unspecified. One of the most popular uh, specifications of this uh, relation was suggested by the unlikelihood based uh, uh, account, um, um, which said, John just talked about it. Uh, so, the unlikelihood based uh, account says that even CP presupposes that P is the most unlikely alternative in the set C of all such alternatives. And there has been, um, again, as John said, uh, <laughs> there has been a, um, some claims about unlikelihood uh, account being problematic. I'm not going to present the motivations for these claims, but I would be happy to discuss it later. So now let's present the degree-based approach first. The main point of this approach is that uh, it doesn't directly compare the propositions P and Q as their likelihood does, but it uh, indirectly does so by comparing the degrees of non-focused entities, X is here on the scale. And the degrees of excess are ordered on a scale which is associated with a salient variable property G. Um, how does it apply to even? Well, we can formulate a well uh, a degree-based presupposition of even, which consists of two requirements. So first is the comparative component, which says that excess degree on the G scale in P worlds is higher than in Q and non-Q worlds. So you can see this is. Yes, this is the comparative component. And the evaluative component uh, says that excess degree on the G scale in P worlds and in Q and non P worlds is at least as high as the standard in G. So both compared to the standard, you can see that they work. Let's have an example. So the context is Bill wants to join the basketball team where the standard height is 1.90 meters. 
The question is, is it suitable for us? We're going to consider two cases here. Case one, A, he is 1.95 meters tall, he is suitable. B, he is even 2.10 meters tall, of course he is. Here we can see that uh, even is felicitous in this case, why? Because both components are, are satisfied. In fact, the evaluative component is satisfied uh, uh, evaluative reminding you, meaning that Bill's degree in P worlds is higher, uh, Bill's degree of suitability, sorry, to join the team in P worlds is higher than in Q and non P worlds. And the comparative component is also met because uh, Bill's degree of suitability to join the team in both P and Q and non P worlds is also higher than the standard. You can see comparing the numbers to the, to the, to the standard height. Okay, now let's consider uh, case two, which is going to be in uh, the use of payment is going to be in English there. A uh, says, well, uh, Bill is 1.65 meters tall. He is not suitable. B, he's even 1.95 meters tall, so he is suitable. What is weird about this example? In fact, the, in the use of even here is in English for the reason that the evaluative component is not met. But first, let me talk about the comparative. Let's make sure that it is indeed met. So the comparative component is met because, as I said, it appeals to your suitability to join the team. In P worlds, is higher than in Q and non P worlds. So this is fine as a previous example. But the evaluative component is going to fail here because uh, uh, one, uh, meaning the uh, Q world, right, the A, is going in, is not going to satisfy the standard requirements. So it is actually not going to be higher than the standard. And this is going to make it to the uh, interest of this. And you can notice also that if we uh, delete even from P2, then the sentence is going to be fine. Okay, now let's move on to the argumentative approach. Uh, so as Gregoire uh, said in his book, this, uh, the argumentative approach goes back to the work of uh, Anson and Dubois, uh, who uh, thought of alternative and arguments for or against hypothesis. And uh, Winterstein reformulates this idea in terms of probabilities, where R is an argument for a hypothesis stage, if and only if the probability of R, of H, sorry, after learning R, is higher than the probability of H. So we compare uh, posterior to the prior probabilities, right? And if the posterior is higher, then R is indeed a good argument for H. Thank you. So how can an uh, argumentative approach apply to even? Uh, in fact, we can formulate the argumentative presupposition of even, which also consists of two requirements. So first is argumentative superiority which will uh, eventually demand that the prejacentism uh, is a stronger argument than the antecedent, right? So it elevates the posterior probability to a higher extent uh, than, than the stronger, uh, than, sorry, the weaker argument. So this, sorry, yeah, the stronger argument is going to elevate the posterior probability to a higher extent than the weaker argument. Then the second component is the argumentative orientation. And it will say that both uh, the prejacent and the antecedent are arguments for the same hypothesis, meaning that both Q and P are going to elevate the posterior probability to a higher extent than the prior probability. Okay, so now uh, to show you that uh, both the argumentative and the degree-based approaches actually capture the same successfully capture the same amount of data. I'm going to illustrate uh, it on the same example that we just had. So reminding you the context, Bill wants to join the basketball team and the standard height is 1.19. And our hypothesis here is Bill is suitable for us. So uh, again, same cases. Case one, uh, he's 1.95 uh, meters tall. Yes, he's suitable. And B, he is even 2.10 meters tall. Of course, he is. All right, let's consider this example in argumentative terms now. We can uh, see that both the superiority and the orientation requirements are met. And that makes the case one a this case. So let's check the superiority requirement. Uh, uh, Predacent P, a bill is 2.10 meters tall, is eventually a higher, uh, sorry, stronger argument 
uh, the Q, which makes the superiority requirement satisfied, right? And those are arguments for the hypothesis, and which makes orientation also uh, satisfied. Let's move on to case two now. A, well, he's 1.65 meters tall, he's not suitable. B, he's even 1.95 meters tall, so he is suitable. Uh, we can notice that the superiority requirement is met, right? Because P is a stronger argument than Q for a hypothesis. But the orientation requirement fails here because eventually Q is not an argument for the hypothesis, right? Bill being 1.65 meters tall is not an argument. For Bill being suitable for us, taking into account our condition that we take in our team only people who are higher than one point. Okay, so now we're going to move to the comparison of two approaches. So, first, as we saw on the example four, um, uh, both accounts capture the same data and they do it successfully, and they distinguish between felicitous and infelicitous uses of even. And, and I, of course, I only show you one example, but uh, we believe that it extends to a higher, to a bigger amount of data. But, but uh, moreover, we can notice some structural similarity between two approaches. So in fact, um, uh, there, is a, there is a parallel between the components uh, of the approaches. So the comparative component, the higher degree component in the degree-based analysis is actually parallel to the superiority requirement, the stronger argument requirement in the argumentative analysis. And uh, same, the evaluative component, uh, both are higher than the standard. Uh, this one, the evaluative component is parallel to the orientation in the argumentative analysis that both are arguments for. But uh, despite the similarity, we are actually going to claim that the argumentative uh, approach has an advantage uh, which is the following. If the degree-based analysis has to postulate both requirements in the presupposition of even, so both have to be hardwired to the account, the argumentative analysis, in fact, can postulate only the superiority, so have only the superiority requirement hardwired into the account, while the orientation requirement is, can be derived. And if it is the case, then eventually argumentative analysis is better because it's less cumulative. And this is what we are claiming. So um, in order to claim that, we, need, we have to make another step, which is introducing the interval argumentative scale for EVA. So the intervals are measured in terms of uh, length. So length uh, L of, uh, of intervals is a numeric value associated with each interval. And uh, uh, the intervals show the effect that each argument has on the hypothesis. And we can measure them in terms of length. So they, uh, I leave this. So the length of the interval associated with an argument P is the difference between the, pro the posterior probability and the prior probability, right? Which is, in, in fact, the effect that the argument P has on the hypothesis. And same goes for Q. Um, now, the scale that you can see on the slide measures the extent to which an argument supports the hypothesis. And we can notice that such a scale is, uh, uh, in fact, lower closed. Now, uh, it allows us to formulate the interval based argumentative presupposition of even. This is nothing new, this is exactly the same argumentative based presupposition that we just had. It just be formulated in terms of interval this time. So the argumentative superiority reformulated in terms of intervals will look like this. The length of, uh, of the interval associated with an argument P has to be bigger than the length of an uh, interval associated with an argument P. And the orientation will require that both lengths are positive numbers. So both the length of the interval associated with P and the length of the interval associated with Q are positive numbers. Okay, so now we can in fact go uh, to our uh, claim. Uh, and I remind you that our big idea is to show that we can in fact derive the orientation requirement from the superiority, which we hardwired into the account. So eventually we want to claim that um, 
if P is a stronger argument for H than Q, then it is presupposed that both P and Q are arguments for H. This is our big goal. And the claim that we are going to, to, to demonstrate here is the following. So now it's, uh, it is exactly the same, just in terms of intervals. So we are going to claim that if the length of the interval associated with an argument P is bigger than the length of the interval associated with an argument Q, then it means that both lengths are positive numbers. This you, you can just say see that this was written on, uh, on the top and the claim is exactly the same thing just before me. Okay, so to show that we're going to reason ad absurdum, right? So we want to we want to postulate that the claim is is false and then come to a contradiction. And because our claim is a, a, is a, is in the form of the implication, then we can just um, uh, see that. Uh, uh, when is the implication false? It is false if the, the antecedent is true and the consequent is false, right? So we are going to take the consequent and the false one. Suppose that this is not the case, that both, uh, both lengths are positive numbers. This means that one of the arguments is not an argument for an H. Let this argument be Q, right? Because we have a projection. It's both, uh, both P and Q. So let this argument be Q. Uh, so Q is not an argument for H. Then one of the following has to be true. So either A, Q is an argument against the hypothesis, right? And this is the case where it's length, the length associated to this interval is a negative number. Or another option is that Q is irrelevant to a hypothesis. And in this case, uh, the length is zero. And in fact, neither uh, eight nor nine is satisfiable. Why? Well, we can notice that eight is not satisfiable here because if the length is in indeed a negative number, that means that we would have to put the interval associated with Q below the bottom the bottom point of the scale, right? Which is not possible on our scale. And uh, the case nine is uh, is not possible neither. Why? Because if the length of the interval associated with an argument Q is zero, then the, uh, then the interval is going to collapse to the bottom line of the scale, which would, which would make eventually the interval not presented on the scale neither. So um, none of this is satisfiable, thus our claim is true. Okay, so the final proposal is the following. Now, having all this in mind, uh, I'm introducing the so-called minimal interval-based argument of first positional theorem. I know it's wrong. Um, so um, uh, this minimal presupposition will say that even CP is supposed that for any focus alternative Q in C, the length of the interval associated with P is bigger than the length of the interval associated with Q. And this is exactly what we wanted to prove, right? With our with with the uh, superiority requirement of hardware and the orientation derived. Okay, um, uh, and in more intuitive terms, um, the extent to which P supports the hypothesis is bigger than the extent to which Q supports the hypothesis. And this is, in in our opinion, everything that we require from even taking the set. Okay, so then for conclusions. Um, first of all, we have shown that the scale for even can indeed be presented as an interval argumentative scale. And uh, such reformulated argumentative approach allows us to make correct predictions regarding the felicity and implicit of even. And it does that uh, same as the degree based approach. Okay, but however, we, we claim that the argument is such uh, formulated in such a way, argument approaches an advantage. In, in fact, it is less stipulative because only one requirement, superiority requirement, has to be hardwired. And thus, we for, it allowed us to formulate a minimal uh, interval based argument. There are some open questions left, and um, most of, mostly they relate to the amount of data that we can capture with such account. So first, uh, uh, challenging data is um, the cases of so-called mirative even. This is the conference head example that Gregoire uh, talked about in his presentation. 
Second is the cases with so-called non-existent or irrelevant alternatives. Those are the cases that you mentioned in your paper, the officials and the pretty officials and who in E or or E them or not be them. Um, and the, the third one uh, are cases with definitely. I have a, an example for reference for you. John is definitely intolerant enough to pitch the head and Bill is even taller. So um, in my opinion, um, uh, all three cases, in fact, pose some challenges to the suggested account. Um, I'm not going to go into detail now. Um, um, but I will be happy to discuss uh, the challenges that these cases provide. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go ahead, please. Leave up to the finance side of section one. So, uh, yeah, yes, yes. I, I'm not sure how uh, superiority requirement is met in the case one because the possibility of age given P is same as the possibility of age given Q, both are 100 percent sure. Because standard height is 1.9. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so okay. So let's consider another case of P. P with 1.95 meters tall, right? So when our uh, our height for the so you sorry, you're talking about the second. No, the first case. Ah, first case. Okay. So um the uh why is the superiority satisfied? Well, this is because uh if we say Bill is 2.10 meters tall. We can say he's definitely uh, tall enough to do it, right? So this is a very strong argument. Okay. Taking into account that the height of, of, of the standard height is one point nine, the requirement, right? Okay. But then if I say, well, uh, Bill is one point ninety five meters tall, he can also join the team, right? Well, but differently, people with standard height is one point nine. Yes. So both are the arguments for, right? This is the orientation. Yes, but in fact, what makes what makes a P a stronger argument than the Q is the fact that let's let's think me and how should in the team, right? I would prefer maybe to have a two point ten meters tall person in my team rather than one point ninety five. So this is the idea. Well, but it's something different than the hypothesis itself, which is preferable or something like that. The probability of the hypothesis given mm -hmm. P and Q are two same. So. Not <laughs> no, no. What, no, the so. idea is that the taller you are, the more suitable. Suitable is a gradable thing. Okay. As far as basketball goes. I imagine we're talking about entrance exam scores. Yeah. So this, no. There's a minimum. But better, more is better. Okay. There's another interpretation of distance in the difference transmitted to the distance and the difference to the difference about the one point nine five. Yeah, I think there's there's still a room to discuss about it. Another question. Maybe maybe okay. Yeah, obviously I do. <laughs> <laughs> No comment. <laughs> uh, sorry, please. Can you go back to the conclusion? No, no, the very no, with the open issue. This is what we ah, yeah. <laughs> Open question. Uh, so for the conference has for example, I have with a sketch for everyone. Exactly. Yeah, the example is the one I, I, I actually discussed on a few days ago. So, if you know, there are a conference and you you can say things like, oh, it's a great conference. They give you a nice hat and they also have 
greatly by these speakers. And the way it even works in those examples is sort of unexpected, even attaches to what is allegedly the weak argument. So you can say they have great uh, invited speaker and they even give you a nice conference hat, where usually conference hats are the main reason we want to attend conference. And so in that case, there would be a counter example of the analysis. I actually think it is. And so I do not endorse the argument of the description of even that even. But in a my solution is that I to go back to unlikelihood approaches, but take the term unlikelihood seriously, as in probability theory. Unlikelihood within the Bayesian framework is, is very well defined, and it's basically the probability of observing your evidence, assuming that the hypothesis is true. And if that's what you think, that's what you put in the semantics of even for the comparative part. That explains the conference. Yeah, I think so. That's, that's the point, right? Yeah, so, so either way, everything you say yeah. sort of works. You just replace, you don't say that even introduces a better argument, you say that it introduces something that has higher and a likely good. Yeah, so this is one of the directions for me to go with that. I'm, I'm puzzled by, by this example, but at the same time, I like that one. I think that's the one. Puzzling. And um, yeah, so this is something that uh, maybe the first thing that we could do. The, the non existent irrelevant alternatives are more interesting. I'm not sure what to do with them either at this point. And, but it also relates to all those monadic cases of even that come across linguistically where diagrammically, you know, you have this. Seemingly pattern where even in English usually means equal, and then it acquires this scalar meaning, and then it ends its life as a purely monadic control. So that's that's the argument that we have in between. Maybe that's what's happening. Well, that that's actually makes me see what, what Greg Warren just said makes it suggests a kind of grammaticalization or pragmaticalization pathway where you might start with something that's more like degree based or something about that and then maybe moves towards something that's about argumentation, right? Is that kind of the intuition? Yeah. Uh -huh. So both could exist, these could be different mm, time slices of the lifetime of a word, like even across the Diachronically, yeah. uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Somebody should work on it. Right. <laughs> but, but like right. argumentation type oriented meaning could be associated with pragmaticalization. Mm -hmm. So more pragmaticalized meaning might be more anchored on argumentation would be one thought. Uh, and your uh, co-orientation Yeah, 
Thank you very much for so, uh, Could you show me the definition of the MIMO inter interval-based augmentation? So uh, which one? Uh, I think the la last, the definite one. The, the very last one. So, yeah. this one. so in this formulation, you can use uh, any, uh, that, that for any focus on trend here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, uh, what about possibility that the uh, Requirements could be uh, uh, existential quantification uh, instead. So that was some of our So, or how, how about the possibility to relax the requirement? Oh, it's interesting. Because now you are thinking about the cases, the cases that you Right, so the non existent that is irrelevant. Then it's. Where is the other side of the Yeah, but I think it's in the field. I mean, it's the same level. So that's the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you again for your